Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a brand new Blackout video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the brand new game mode push and how Blizzard has explained it or a dev from Blizzard has actually taken the time to explain the entire mode. As you guys know, we've seen some gameplay from push for a while now and I do like the concept behind push because it's very similar to some other modes that we've had in Overwatch so far, but I feel like it's a new, refined, fresher take on those certain modes. In all honesty, it seems like it's a very fun mode to play, especially in competitive Competitive, I feel like push is just something that's just a little bit different a little bit more entertaining Especially since you have this very friendly robot who's also whose whose job is just literally just to push this payload You know back and forth between the map and he'll he'll have different You know voice lines and stuff when he has to go on the other side and push You know the payload to the other side and stuff. So I feel like it's really cool I feel like it's very interesting and yeah, it's really cool to get some clarification on this mode So as you guys uh, so <laughs> Please hold on. As we get into this video, guys, definitely drop a like, uh, subscribe to the channel for all new Overwatch 2 information, all new Overwatch 2 news. Thank you so much for everybody who has been subscribing. I appreciate you so, so, so much. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. Anyway, let's get into the video. So this is from an article called Overwatch 2 Devs Reveal New Game Mode Details Ahead of Upcoming Beta. And this is going over the game mode push. So we're going to go over this article right now. So in a post on the official Overwatch website, game director Aaron Keller and art director Diane Rogers delved into the new mode in upcoming maps, New Queen Street, Colosseo, Midtown, and Circuit Royale. According to Keller, push will be a much faster game mode compared to control and escort, and it sounds players should expect a much more deathmatch feel to it, meaning it's easier for flanking, you need to watch multiple locations, he stated. Additionally, while push maps are symmetrical, players will still be able to notice some subtle differences regardless of the side that they're on. He stated, we wanted to make subtle changes, like one half of the map has having cooler tones and the opposite side being warmer, you will notice that the signs, storefronts, and aesthetics are unique to each other. Furthermore, the team wants to add visual cues to enhance gameplay, as seen in other modes and maps. We want to highlight the capture point by making them iconic locations, like the firehouse and Grand Central Station in Midtown. Players learn visually where the important parts of the map are located, and the world guides the game mode, Roger stated. I do want to state that the devs did also go ahead and confirm day and night cycles for these maps as well so that's actually really super exciting because we thought day and night cycles were just going to be kind of something that wasn't really going to appear like that throughout like competitive play but as you guys know we do have maps in overwatch that do have nighttime so um as as just the backdrop for the map so it's not like we haven't played on maps that are at night before it's something that's just kind of always been in overwatch so now to see that we could be playing on the same map but between different times of the day between day and night that's actually really super exciting aaron keller goes on to state in addition to new maps existing ones will be getting a makeover with some brand new cover added to compensate for having one less tank available in 5v5 gameplay and i guess this makes a lot of sense because now we have one less tank so in terms of balancing the game to kind of compensate for the fact that there's less tanks on each team blizzard is invested on adjusting maps to kind of match the flow of games as the game kind of progresses and as more players get their hands on overwatch 2 you can kind of see how they'll be taking notes and how they'll be making slight adjustments to the maps on overwatch 2 probably possibly for each season or even each battle pass if you guys don't know overwatch 2 is likely set to receive some type of battle pass as we've seen in the leaks uh prior uh before now so i've covered videos on that as well you guys should definitely uh, you guys should definitely check that out uh but yeah the the, the future for overwatch is looking more and more of not just updating heroes or balancing heroes, but also balancing maps as well. So that's actually really exciting. But yes, the developers did confirm a day and night cycle to certain maps, which will actually change how easy it is to detect foes. Go on to state, another example includes the new daytime and nighttime cycles that make certain areas easier or more difficult to see, and it gives an overall different vibe to each map. They state referencing their de design philosophy for overall Overwatch 2. Like I said before guys, the day night cycles have been hinted at more recently, especially with the new Overwatch Anniversary Remix event. So if you guys don't know, there will be two more Remix events covering for the rest of the year instead of these other events that we would normally have, i.e. more like summertime games, you know, Halloween stuff, uh, Winter Wonderland, all that stuff will no longer uh, be active throughout the year. Instead of that, we're actually going to be, re uh, be receiving these Remix events, these Remix Anniversary events, which gives you 
time to go back and collect old skins rather than having these one single events where you can only collect a certain set of skins. Apparently, the map modes will also be ever evolving with the devs promising to closely monitor how players engage and make changes accordingly. So like I said before, guys, like these maps are not set in stone. Even at release, these maps will be adjusted. You'll have different sites that will be moved here and there slightly to make that adjustment for competitive play. I think that's super exciting because we've seen other games like Valorant and, you know, other other FPSs kind of make these adjustments to their maps as well to kind of create this balancing feature for the maps themselves. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for the video today. Tell me what you guys think. Are you excited for the fact that maps will be changing throughout uh, possibly future patches for Overwatch 2? I feel like this is absolutely amazing. It adds more depth to the game. I feel like heroes being adjusted as well as maps altogether just creates a more competitive feel, a more uh, a more fast paced feel, a more invested feel, because I feel like that's a huge investment to really make these uh, changes to these maps, to really pay that much attention to detail in terms of what's going on in the Overwatch community and competitive play. I feel like that is just huge for the game, and that's a sure sign that we're actually headed into some uh, some uh, pretty great days for Overwatch too. so I'm really excited. Anyway, Anyway, guys thank you so much for watching thank you thank you thank you my name is blackout and as always for all new overwatch 2 videos and updates so stay subscribed to the channel guys anyway thanks again and have a great day till next time